If you study history carefully, that you might remember one of the most profound, and should we say the greatest the leaders in the world, which was Winston Churchill. Now, in the year of 1943, Winston Churchill made a statement to America, and the statement went like this. The price of greatness is responsibility. Now, when we look at the geopolitical change today, how should we understand and interpret the sentence that's stated by Winston Churchill? And you're right, of course, that he is right, that today when we come to the word greatness, that could link to the word responsibility. And for example, if you're a leader running for the country, and naturally that you are being attacked by political opposition, and of course that we're looking at so many political issues and also social disagreements. Now today, in this episode, we need to bring the nation of Italy into the center of our talk. Now, if you follow the news closely, that you know today, the Italian government today is facing another major crisis, which related to the word immigration. Now, only that we've seen more illegal immigrants today flooded to the nation of Italy. But meanwhile, this is getting too chaotic. The current administration have not offered any tangible solution. In other words, we don't know if the government is going to continue to shut the border, close the lines to prevent the illegal immigrants flooding to this country, or there's an alternative, and perhaps the European Union can step in to help them as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to invite our distinguished speaker, who is Maria Zubello. Again, if you're familiar with Maria, she's an amazing journalist. And of course, that she reports constantly on international issues. And also, she's a regular contributor to MilitantWire.com. Well, Maria, and welcome back to The Missing Piece. Thank you for having me. Maria, again, I, I want to get really started on this topic related to the immigration issue, particularly related to illegal immigration to, uh, to Italy today. Now, some mentioned that the current prime minister, which is Georgia Melanie, that she really gets a reality check on immigration. So in other words, at this moment, she's caught between the decisions. Now, from your perspective, why do you think today that when we come to the nation of Italy, immigration has become a central or we say most controversial topic for the nation? And also, how should we evaluate the performance and also the solution under the current prime minister? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to highlight that uh, uh, Italy's geography is not uh, um, by our side mm. because we are the border with Africa, uh, just separated by the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, starting from that, uh, I feel that it's important to check uh, the figures. Um, I give you just some uh, insight. According to data from the Ministry of the Interior, uh, there were approximately 124,000 landings mm -hmm. in Italy only this year, mm. which is double the number recorded in the same period last year. So you can imagine we are talking about a huge, huge figures. And let's see, uh, let's get a look uh, at the um, country where um, these migrants come from. Uh, the first in the list is Guinea, followed by Ivory Coast, Egypt, and Tunisia. Why is important to see uh, the, count, the African countries where the people come from? Because uh, you can uh, um, establish strategy uh, agreements uh, within the European Union and take uh, steps uh, to face these massive problems. Let me say that uh, migration is not only a problem of Italy, is an European problem and um, I can say also a US problem. Why? Because when you have a massive flow of people, um, most of uh, uh, them are um, uh, with no documents or with forged passports or uh, with a difficult background to, to check, you allow uh, an unknown flow of people to enter to Europe, maybe to uh, to get uh, um, documents and, um, 
and, and, and the way of living there. And in a very connected world, it's very easy to see a flow of uh, a migration or um, migration of specific uh, criminal bad actors from Europe to United States. Uh, for example, uh, um, some uh, um, recent uh, uh, police operations uncovered a flow of migrants from Dominican Republic to um, Europe with forged documents. And you can have the same um, in the opposite way. But uh, let's focus on Europe. Last July, the European Union, it's important to remind, reached an international agreement with Tunisia, which is the first line um, of, a, of a issue in terms of uh, geographical uh, strategy. This agreement included economic support from Brussels in exchange for the implementation of economic reforms and border control. Uh, the text of this memorandum was signed by the president of Tunisia, Kais Sayed, and also European Commission President Ursula uh, von der Leyen, Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni, and uh, at the time resigning Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte. The problem of this agreement for a journalist is that if you read the text, um, there are no details. Mm. Um, Brussels don't specify uh, the amount of economic commitment uh, or uh, worst of the specific demands that have been made by Tunisia. Uh, the text is very general and speaks about uh, economic uh, trade cooperation uh, and so on and so on. The idea, the general idea behind this argument is that uh, the United uh, um, the European Union provide financial support to Tunisia, and Tunisia, for its part, uh, will facilitate the repatriation of Tunisian nationals. But the problem is that the Tunisian nationals are the last uh, in the list. So what we do with the other immigrants? And here we have some problem because Tunisia already say that they want to open refugee camps or center uh, to which non-Tunisian migrants can also be brought back uh, as uh, Europe proposed during the, negoci the negotiations. So what was the result of this very weak agreement that, for example, on September 13, Lampedusa, which is the mm. uh, immigration spot in Sicily, received 7,000 people in 24 hours. So it's huge, it's a massive flow. And to understand why it's dangerous is that when you have um, these massive flows, it's impossible to uh, check uh, um, the criminal background of these people. And October 16, we have an uh, um, uh, Islamist attack in Bruce Brussels. Uh, the perpetrator was Abdesalem Lassouhed. Uh, he killed two people. And this guy, um, the anti-terrorism, anti could, uh, um, could, could check his profile. This guy came to Lampedusa on 2011, and it was undocumented. It was an illegal migrant. Mm. So uh, it gave you um, the picture of the issue. For sure. Uh, Africa is calling and Europe can be silent. But at the, at the same time, we have to imagine that in Asia, in, uh, in Africa, you have different forces operating, like, for example, Wagner Group. So if you have Wagner Group behind some migration movements, uh, it becomes a political, uh, a geopolitical uh, strategy, not humanitarian issue you know mm. what i mean so uh, it's complicated and also we have to we have to see because we we could see here very clearly from brazil uh, as you know brazil is a portuguese speaking country and uh, they made uh, recently an arrangement with other um, portuguese speaking countries in africa and uh, portugal to have a free um free um human uh, um access uh, around uh, uh, between uh, between these countries uh, among these countries you have angola mm. okay 
what I uncovered with my journalistic investigation that Angola now it's very critical because there, there is a lot of corruption and this corruption is facilitating the um, uh, 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 through passport uh, providing fake nationalities. Mm. So it means that I, if I come from Nigeria and I need uh, a passport. Um, to, to flow, to enter Brazil, to enter Portugal, for example, um, I can go to Angola and have a, a, a true passport with a fake nationality because I'm not from Angola, but I'm from Nigeria. So as you can see, the proportion uh, 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 and the, the size of the issue is global mm. because the world is global. Mm. You know, Maria, again, I want to shift our conversation back to Italy. Again, since you mentioned the number, let's get another set of number into our conversation. According to the article that, and I quote, more than 140,000 migrants have already reached Italy by boat this year, almost twice as many as in the whole of 2022. Thousands more lost their lives during the journey, and last month, 7,000 people arrived over just a couple of days, as you mentioned before, in Lampedusa. Now, Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, for some countries, as you mentioned, they're also facing this issue with illegal immigrants or migration. Some propose, or we say, the liberal agenda that suggests that we should provide a path for citizenship. So, in other words, if we put ourselves on the stool of humanitarian, and we should provide a path, a legal way for them to become citizens. But if you stand on the other side of the aisle, they oppose this idea, so believe that this country is ruled and is regulated by principles, and we should go through a thorough criminal background examination before allowing anyone. Now, coming back to the nation of Italy, why do you think today it's so difficult for the government to make a decision. So in other words, is it still necessary to get the help and support from EU or Italy alone can actually get the problem solved before it is getting too late? Because the uh, European Union is not that united. I mean, nobody wants the problem. So mm. as Italy is the most country to land, uh, is, a, is an Italy problem. And uh, I can tell you that Italy did a lot because we have the Vatican, um, a lot of uh, Catholic uh, centers that are helping. So we cannot say that Italy is not uh, uh, providing an, um, an humanitarian response to the issue. But the issue is huge. And when you have 7,000 people uh, arriving in one, uh, just in one day, uh, in a small island like uh, Lampedusa, you can imagine that even the United States uh, could uh, could check all the backgrounds because uh, we assist uh, we could see pictures um, showing people uh, fleeing escaping uh, and if you look at the average uh, profile of african migrants they are all men under 50 years old and when they arrive in the big cities like uh, rome milan etc you you can see that it's impossible to absorb all this uh, human capital. So what, what was the resu result? These cities, these big cities became very dangerous in terms of safety. Mm. If you go to the um, train uh, railway station, you can see people, uh, migrants uh, selling drugs because the first job that they can get to survive is uh, smuggling drugs. Because don't forget that drug trafficking is very powerful in Italy. In Milan, in the last years, uh, the, the consumers of cocaine increased a lot. So if you have a market, you, 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 you must have bad actors to run uh, the daily life of this market. So this is the first point. Um, the second point now, um, we are living uh, in a very dangerous uh, historical moment, mm. is a third war uh, scattered. No? That's right. We have conflict um, in Ukraine, we have now the conflict in the Middle East. So now the alert is about terrorism, about Islamic people, radical, radicalized people coming, for example, from Turkey. Don't forget that Tur Turkey now 
is the door uh, uh, for uh, um, former ISIS uh, fighters that escape uh, to the arrest. So Turkey is a bomb ready to explode. Mm -hmm. And Turkey uh, could be a platform, a hub uh, for sending, uh, not the Turkish government, but the country uh, is a platform for former jihadi, jihadist members uh, coming to Europe uh, through Italy mm -hmm. uh, to, to make attacks. And this is the good moment to, to do it because all the Islamists uh, part of the, more, of the world uh, called to the jihad. Um, so we, we are facing different problems. What could be the impact, uh, for example, in terms of security um, issues in Italy? Because uh, you ask me when you contact. Um, as you know, Italy has an history, has a very interesting history of uh, anarchist movements uh, mm. and spread uh, terrorism. We had the Red Brigades, and then we have the new Red Brigades. So if I have a, a huge flow of migrants uh, coming from Africa, poor, with no uh, professional profile, so really, really in a very bad situation, it's not a first class migration, and you have a country like Italy at this moment where you have 7.3% of unemployment and where you don't have salaries that increase and the cost of living and rents is increasing a lot. Mm. You have social, social troubles. Okay, these social troubles can be exploded by mm. um, radical movements. And in my opinion, not that uh, uh, far right movement because far right movements we already have it casa pounds lealtà azione movimento nazionale we are talking about uh, 427000 militants okay mm. is a problem because uh, as you know uh, we have a uh, history uh, told us that fascism was really bad so it's not good to have uh, these far right movements and in my opinion uh, if we if we left problems they will come from anarchists and red brigades the new red brigades which is a mix of everything because you have a old ideology of the red brigades uh, you have the whole roots of anarchy that in italy is very strong that's why on january last january um, the anti-terrorism in italy gave an alert about the risk of uh, attacks because there were attacks from anarchists there was the case of cospito who is a, an anarchist in prison uh, so there were there were there was a, a, a very strong response by the anarchist movement. So in my opinion, if you if will see problems, we will see them from this part of the society. The, the far right movement, for sure, will explore the narrative of the migration uh, see as an invasion of Europe uh, and which is comprehensible because if you if you walk on, on Milan and you are not rich, uh, you take the bus, you take the subway, uh, you have problems, mm. in fact. And uh, that's another point uh, that explains why Giorgia Meloni uh, won the elections, because until uh, now, the left parties try to minimize, to minimize. They work for migrants, but not for workers. So mm. they change, they shifted the, the, the historical focus of lefty parts, um, uh, um, parties, uh, who was, uh, which was uh, um, the rights uh, of workers. So the scenario changed. I, in my opinion, politics in this moment, just to reply to your uh, Churchill statement, is not responsible because uh, most of the politicians are not... Uh, have not a, a professional mm. profile. Mm. Uh, so if you have people that come from different uh, um, parts of society with, no, with not a professional history of politics, uh, of experience, uh, 
you can produce monsters like uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil, mm. uh, on Milan in Argentina. And these monsters are perfect for uh, far left movements that are in fact uh, promoting uh, um, dictatorial or uh, authoritarian regimes, uh, um, making alliance with Iran, Russia, and so on. So the question is that in these historical moments, we don't have, in my opinion, a class of politicians uh, able to manage the huge issues at stake in a professional way. Mm. Maria, previously... To create a new, a new class of politicians. Well, again, Maria, previously, we, you and I, we had email exchange and regarding this topic. And now one of the qu critical issues that I brought up to you is what we called political polarization today. I mean, again, it's not just happening in the U.S. and it's taking place around the world. But now let's go back to uh, Georgia Melanie. Now, again, she was elected based on this, what we called conservatism or conservative principles. Now, some experts or, again, some voices came out of the international community to believe she is what we called a right-wing populist. So how fair or how much do you think that this immigration issue or this illegal immigration crisis it's actually a testing whether uh, uh, Georgia Maloney, that she is belonging or she is part of this right-wing populist, or she shouldn't be crowned or she should, shouldn't be labeled as right-wing populist. How should we balance the view? And what what is your uh, are your thoughts on I that? Georgia Maloney is not Marine Le Pen. Mm. In the past, when she entered the politics, she espoused this narrative. But now, as you can see from the choices of the government, they're really pronato choices. She broke up with China. Uh, um, about Ukraine, she was on the U.S. side. Mm. So I think that uh, um, you should see the practical facts of her government. Don't forget that Italy decided to to move right after years of lefty parties that they were really incapable of um, understand uh, the social problems of society mm. and forget that before Giorgia Meloni Meloni we have a five star party which was in my opinion is not a political uh, it's not a personal um, judgment, but I think that five-star movement was a disaster mm. for Italy. Uh, when we faced the COVID um, epidemic, um, five-star movement, uh, Giuseppe Conte, we, who at that time was our prime minister, um, opened the door to Cuban doctors, to Russian uh, medical help, uh, creating a lot of security issues for my country. So we have to understand that people decide to move right, as they always did in Italy, because before um, the parties uh, uh, in charge of the country were totally unfit mm. to run the country. So they said, let's try another another. Another change is different, for example, to compare to Brazil. Mm. To compare Brazil, because Brazilians don't have memory. Mm. So they elect Lula because they forget the corruption uh, and the scandal of corruption uh, that happened just uh, four, four years ago. Italians are more more rough, so they mm. more rude. They, they say, okay, you, you, you were unfit, now I change. Mm. Well, let's see. And I say, let's see, because uh, um, uh, see this scenario, honestly, who can you elect in Italy? Mm. Schlein had a lot of problem inside uh, her coalition, mm. lefty coalition. And honestly, if you listen to her speeches, you really don't understand uh, what are the plan for the, the social issues that Italy is facing. Mm. 
concrete uh, response to their daily problems. They don't want uh, uh, um, systems, ideological systems. They want a better quality of life. They want to avoid that young people emigrate because in Italy you can find a decent job with a decent mm. salary. So that's reality. And I think in this moment, we must be practical. That's right, Maria. I mean, this is the moment that we must be practical. Now, I want to ask you one more question before we end the show. Now, again, according to the report that the European Union is also making progress on a new pact on immigration, which entails stricter procedures for alien, uh, uh, excuse me, asylum seekers coming from countries that deem safe loser rules to expel rejected applicants. Again, as you mentioned before, we're not only looking at the nation of Italy, we're looking at the nation of Greece and Spain and also other member states. And of course, that for those people, they really have to pay thousands of euros for every asylum seekers they refuse to take. Now, Maria, the last question I want to ask is, how accountable do you think it's you EU today when we look at this immigration issue now and from from this day forward how do you think that we can expect the immediate reaction from the Italian government today your final thoughts I'm not positive because uh, uh, United um, uh, Europe is trying to to make some steps forward, uh, but uh, the problem is now. Mm. Okay, so, uh, and the other problem is that it depends uh, on the forces on uh, base in Africa. Uh, and I repeat, uh, Wagner Group uh, plays a, a vital, a crucial role in all this story. So it means Putin, Russia, mm. uh, to destabilize Europe. So, in my opinion, now uh, uh, my suggestion is we need to to be united mm. because, uh, as the terrorists in Brussels uh, indicate us, the the problem is uh, European is a global problem, mm. and Italy, unfortunately, is the first step for this migration flow. So Italy needs help because mm. uh, even uh, with the help and the support of the Vatican. Uh, uh, it's impossible to manage uh, these massive flows. Mm. And uh, if really Europe will be united, uh, we will have a, a huge impact also on, on terrorism issues. Mm. Because in this moment, we are facing this threat. It's an important threat. We can have a um, uh, lonely wolf, but also organized groups uh, that can target people, places, facilities, and we are all involved in this story. Mm. And these people can travel, can travel to the United States, can travel to Latin America and then entering the United States as it happened. Mm. So uh, we must be all involved in this issue and try to be humans, but at the same time to be legal. Mm. Maria, that's a great way to put it. Again, you sent a strong reminder to our listeners and viewers. We need to be human, but also these people should be legal when they enter the country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to speak to Maria Zupello. Again, I strongly encourage everyone to stay connected with her and also with her publications. Again, she's one amazing investigative journalist that she covers a lot of issues related to international affairs. And also, she's very active and a contributor on MilitantWire.com. So again, thank you, uh, Maria, for your time and really enjoyed our conversation. We'd love to have you back on the show as we continue to pay attention to the global affairs today. So thank you so much for doing this.